in my life, I try not to wait till there's a huge setback or failure. I actually try and build a relationship with adversity by inviting some discomfort and adversity into my life. In business, that's the, I'm always running three experiments. Personally, I, I and you know, this is personal, uh, I, like to, I like to take on some challenges that make me uncomfortable. And so, and this is an example of one of those challenges. And I, I wrote the book with my brother, by the way. This is my brother, Chad. Um, Chad runs the business of the Dallas Cowboys. And um, so Chad calls me, this was a couple of years ago, that photo, he calls me and says, hey, I, I got a bucket list item, I want you to do it with me. I said, what is it? He said, it's, it's the world's toughest half marathon. It's called Hell on the Hill. I said, no. Like, why, the, why would I want, that's a suffer fest, man. I don't run races. Like, he's like, no, we'll train and we can do it together and it'll be a cool thing. And it's like Jesse Itzler's thing, who wrote, you know, Living with a Seal and owns the Atlanta Hawks. And Chad and Jesse were friends. So he could, Chad convinced me to do it. So we under train, of course, and we show up in Maine. And I, I look at this course and I'm like, oh my God. I mean, the, the incline on this hill, and I'm thinking, I can barely run five miles. I gotta run 13 miles up that monster? And, and you, you have, I think, four, yeah, you have four hours to finish. And so Je Jesse's there, and he's a great host, and you know, he tells, he's like, now finishing means you didn't quit. You're still on the hill. You don't have to cross the finish line, but if you're on the hill and you're still working, we give you a medal. That means you finished the race. You gave it everything you had. Well, my brother looks at me and says, you know, that doesn't apply to us. We got to cross that finish line. I said, all right, man. So it's dinner the night before the race. And uh, a couple hundred people that are committed to doing this insane thing. And Jesse's standing up and he said, look, tomorrow, halfway into the race, two hours. And he said, we're going to have, you know, stations and water and banana, everything you need. And it's, it's going to be music and cheering, and this is going to be just going to be camaraderie and community. He said, but two hours in, in for, for 20 minutes, we're going to go silent. The whole hill is going to go silent. There's going to be no announcements, no loudspeaker, no music, no talking. And he said, and that's about the point when people start thinking about quitting halfway in. Because you're suffering now, and you still have a long way to go. And he said, at that point, I'm going to encourage you tonight to think about something beyond yourself, who you're running for. Like, we're fortunate to be here, to be able-bodied, to be in this experience. Be grateful. But think about maybe somebody else that you care about, that you love, maybe somebody else that couldn't be here today. Run for them. Assign meaning to this. When it gets hard, who are you going to be running for tomorrow? And he talked about running for his father, who he had recently lost to Alzheimer's. Well, man, there wasn't a dry eye in that room. So I said, okay, I, he said, that's your homework tonight. Go to bed, get rest. Think about who you're running for. And he said, tomorrow, before the race starts, we're going to have some shares. I shared about my dad. That's who I'm going to think about during the silent part. And we'll call some other people up with the microphone before the race starts to talk about who they're thinking about. And then we'll go take on the hill. So... Next morning comes, we're sitting there, we're all geared up to run. Jesse gets up and he said, okay, like, we're gonna do some shares and, you know, call people up if you feel open and willing. And so he hands the mic and the share started. And I, I, I can, it's hard for me to retell it because they were so emotional and so vulnerable. You know, but people made these decisions and commitments that when it gets hard and I wanna quit, I'm gonna think about somebody else beyond me. And that will be my intrinsic motivation to keep going. So, you know, I'm crying, my brother's crying, everybody was, as we're listening to these heartfelt, vulnerable shares. And I like, I looked over at my brother as this was winding down. I said, hey man, uh, Chad, like, who are you running for? He said, I'm running for you. So you're my brother. We're doing this together. He says, this is about brotherhood. We're a team today. And he said, I'm only going to cross that finish line if you cross. And I hope you only cross if I cross. Well, then I start crying more, right? And we walk up to that hill and started that race. And halfway through, he goes down with the leg cramp, and I help him up, and we let him belong. And three quarters of the way through, I started to get chest pain. I said, I'm having a heart attack. He said, no, you're not. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I have to stop. He said, you're not dying, I promise. It just hurts. And, and, the, and, and the moral of that story is, um, that's the picture of us crossing the finish line, which he likes to point out. He goes, you know, at the finish line, I look a lot better than you did. <laughs> but, but the moral of the story is, we would never have finished that race alone. But when you assign meaning to your gap analysis, when you make it more than about you, your success, your quota, your number, your territory, and I would invite you in this moment, you've decided who you want to become, decide who you're running for, because it makes crossing the finish line together all that more worth it. Thank you for your time. Appreciate you guys, thank you.